Welcome to Metal Welding Lecture Series by Prof. Joyjeet Ghosh. This is the 10th lecture of the series. This lecture will be on Electron Beam Welding EBW. He will be discussing about Electron Beam Welding Principle, how Electron Beam is generated. Electron Beam Welding Processes and Apparatus is discussed in details, parameters affecting the heat input of Electron Beam Welding EBW Operating Process, Conduction Mode EBW Welding, Keyhole Mode EBW Welding. Comparing electron beam welding and laser welding is also discussed. Advantages, limitations and applications of electron beam welding are also discussed so, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this 10th lecture of a series of lecture on metal welding. So in this lecture we will be discussing about a very important welding process uh, which is known as electron beam welding. There was a requirement of a welding process which is capable of uh, welding deep and the heat affected zone is narrow. And also there was a requirement of a welding process uh, which can weld efficiently and cleanly having good quality weld for welding of uh, reactive materials like zirconium, titanium, beryllium and welding of refractory material like tungsten, molybdenum etc. etc. So uh, electron beam welding probably an answer to these requirements. So what happens in electron beam welding as the name suggests we use the electron beam. So what is this electron beam? <clears throat> the electron beam we can generate in various ways by uh, exciting a material which can readily emit electrons. So such materials may be tungsten, there may be other materials also. So why tungsten? Tungsten and tungsten alloys because it can uh, readily emit mm, electrons on excitation. Uh, so how you can excite it and also the temperature uh, the melting temperature of tungsten is quite high around 3400 degrees uh, centigrade that makes tungsten and uh, and uh, ideal candidate for electron emission particularly you have seen for uh, gas tungsten drag welding for plasma arc welding and again for electron beam welding so if we excite such materials by th heat or by optical so there can be thermionic emission there can be optical emissions or even uh, we can excite or emit electrons by uh, bombarding with electrons that is secondary emissions and also using <coughs> high energy electric field. So there are various ways of uh, exciting uh, material and by which uh, the, the uh, electrons can be emitted <coughs> from the atom of such materials. Now this electron emitted is uh, having a certain amount of charge. Now since it has a charge, it can be manipulated. That means it can be energized, it can be focused, it can be reflected, uh, deflected by an electrical or magnetic field. So we can use electromagnetic lenses to collimate the electrons in form of a beam. And this beam, mm, uh, when strikes a workpiece, and we can also accelerate the electrons. So this accelerated electrons when strikes the workpiece, the kinetic energy, uh, the mass being very less, half mb square, the kinetic energy is very high because of the velocity. This kinetic energy is converted into heat energy. Now the energy density is very high. However, the total heat content is less, but the energy density or the power density as we call it is very high because it is acting in a very small uh, uh, area typical area the diameter may be mm, around 0.2 mm to around 13 mm <coughs> it can be varied so it, it is normally uh, acted uh, the being electrons normally bombards in a very small area and the heat accumulated heat generated is very small within a very small area <coughs> but this heat is sufficient to melt if required even ev evaporate the material so in welding, uh, in welding basically we will be melting uh, the metal and the two base metal forms a coalescence. <coughs> so entire thing is carried out in a vacuum chamber. 
so that the path of the electrons is not disturbed and secondly uh, the quality of the weld is very good because we are not using any kind of fluxes or any kind of shielding gases so so as to prevent the tungsten filament as well as the workpiece uh, contamination we carry out the out this type of welding in a vacuum so i again repeat in this there is a cathode uh, <coughs> which is basically made of tungsten uh, tungsten filament which is tungsten filament uh, the entire thing is carried out in a vacuum so we apply uh, we apply high voltage power source this high voltage uh, ranges from <coughs> uh, 30 kilo or kilovolt to around 170 kilovolt or uh, it may be more also so normal range is around for uh, medium voltage around 30 to 60 for high voltage 100 and more 100 kilo or kilovolt and more so 30 to 60 kilovolt is a normal setting for higher settings it should be around 100 kilovolt or more so that much uh, voltage is applied between a bias current a bias grid and a tungsten filament and the anode <coughs> so because of that because of thermionic emissions electrons are emitted these ele electrons are uh, emitted and accelerated by this anode and uh, it converges into a point which is called crossover and then again diverges and then again uh, uh, converges and uh, brought into the uh, workpiece surface now here this beam being very thin this has to be aligned properly for aligning this we have an optical uh, viewing port uh, from which optical rays are there which can be aligned with the electron beam properly before the welding is carried, actually carried out and this is the electron beam chamber this is the uh, this is the uh, work chamber in this work chamber uh, you have a cnc work table this CNC work table that can be moved computer numerical controlly in x direction in y, uh, y direction and the beam falls here for scanning we can move the uh, x and uh, work, work piece in x and y direction <coughs> and we can control the movement uh, y uh, computer numeric control so these are electromagnetic lenses for converging uh, the work piece this is a converging coil and there is a diverging coil and the ray is made to fall in the uh, onto the workpiece and the workpiece can move in this direction or in the that, that direction also that depending on the requirement okay <coughs> so normally it has rails on which you can move uh, in x and y direction and uh, this is this entire chamber is an entire thing actually is carried out in vacuum so this vacuum ranges from 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus uh, 5 tor which is a medium vacuum we can go up to the minus 10 tor <coughs> for high vacuum so for reactive materials like tons uh, like uh, uh, titanium zirconium for those type of materials we need high vacuum so in that cases uh, the vacuum would be around 10 to the power minus 10 <coughs> and okay uh, there is a two crossover this is a first crossover and this is a second crossover this second crossover is very important so this beam uh, width can be controlled by the crossover uh, the width we can control the width and accordingly we can control the depth of penetration so here if the crossover is above the surface we will obtain a shallow uh, weld bead and if the crossover is on, on the surface we will have a semicircular cross uh, weld, uh, weld bead and if it is below the surface and we will have a uh, high penetration now when it is below the surface uh, the heat conduction uh, will be mainly in one direction that is in vertical direction and whereas if it is crossover is slightly above uh, the conduction will be in all direction so even if it is if it is in uh, below it will be in this direction also but mainly it is in uh, vertically downward direction therefore the penetration obtained is more when the crossover is below the surface <coughs> okay now one thing is very important here the electron beam strikes the workpiece the kinetic energy is converted into heat energy which is used for melting the workpiece this is a fusion welding process and the uh, the two material uh, form a coalescence now this coalescence results in a uh, weld which we call autogenous weld that means no external material we are adding no filler material is melted and added uh, so no fluxes are there so no external uh, material is added therefore it is an autogenous weld we obtain normally sometimes in very rare cases uh, welding of steel we may add certain deoxidative uh, fire 
uh, filler materials but normally we do not add filler materials so therefore uh, we can say up to certain uh, level that it is an autogenous weld okay now the beam strikes the workpiece and heat is generated now this heat generated is uh, used uh, and is a very limited uh, area where the heat is generated so the heat affected zone is very uh, thin and very low or very small you can say and that is the beauty one of the beauty one of the usp of this process is that the heat affected zone is very less and the depth of penetration is very high <coughs> can be obtained by this process you can vary it of course and uh, one thing is very important here when the electron strikes now there are other emissions that can take place there can be secondary emissions there can be backscattered emissions and there can be emissions of x-ray also these electrons are striking the workpiece so several kind of radiation can take place there can be emissions of uh, electrons uh, that is secondary electrons then wax color electrons and there can be uh, x-ray also therefore this chamber is normally made of thick steel plates to absorb all this kind of emissions uh, which are harmful to human being and uh, other things so these x-rays and the other emissions are also not essential and not uh, wanted <coughs> okay uh, so now controlling the crossover we can use two different modes of uh, electron beam welding one is conduction mode other is your keyhole mode so that will be discussing in, in subsequent slides now, uh, to control the amount of heat, four parameters are very important. It is the number of electrons that is striking, the velocity of the electrons, the beam of the electrons, the beam width of the electrons, or beam diameter of the electron, electron beam diameter, and the velocity with which the work is being fed, or other terms, you can say the exposure time. So the, you are moving slowly or you are moving fast that will depend on the exposure that will decide the exposure how much time the workpiece material is exposed the more the time it is exposed the deeper will be the penetration so uh, so these four parameters are very important i again repeat the number of electrons striking the workpiece the uh, the velocity of the electrons the velocity of the electrons can reach up to around 2 lakh kilometer <coughs> so uh, this is uh, almost around um, 50 to 80 percent of the speed of light so velocity of electrons we can control we can also control the diameter of the electron beam and we can control the speed with which the workpiece material is moving that is the exposure time so that all these things can be controlled to control the amount of heat that is acting on a particular location so that is the key parameters in electron beam welding So you can see if this crossover is uh, slightly above the surface you can obtain a shallow uh, it is almost semicircular you can say and it is of higher depth so if it is below the surface uh, so we can obtain a we can what we call it a, a keyhole welding can be this is keyhole modes and this is conduction mode so you can see the viewing port here this diagram already i have discussed So the voltage ranges from 30 kilo volt to around 175 it can go more also around 300 also and normal range is around 10 to the minus 3 to the minus 5 this is medium vacuum and high vacuum may be around 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 10 or 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power minus 10 will be high vacuum the current is very less and this is the speed the temperature generated about 2500 or more of a very small area the depth to it can be exceed up to 20 is to 1 so this can weld very thick plates also very thin plates also so the range is very high from 0.2 mm thick thin to let's say around 20 mm uh, thick thick plate can also be welded easily to up to 300 mm uh, plate can also be welded so <coughs> So it is a wide range of thickness that can be welded by electron beam welding. 
so the high voltage will be around 100 to 150 kilo volt and the medium voltage will be around or low voltage will be around 30 to 860 kilo volt so we can weld steel materials between 0.1 to 200 mm thickness quite high very high in fact very rarely uh, the welding process we can weld up to that much th high thickness so so for aluminium it is around 0.1 to around 300 mm very high so what is the process steps if we discuss first you have to clean uh, the weld material which you are joining properly and the edges has to be prepared properly and aligned very accurately if, if the beam thickness is uh, very low or diameter is very small then the alignment has to be perfect otherwise uh, the beam may pass through the uh, gap between the two metal pieces at certain point the, beam, the beam may pass through the gap between the two metal pieces which you are joining so alignment is very important and of course if you are joining a ferrous material it has to be demagnetized any kind of magnetism may deflect the electrons so it may hamper the uh, welding process so demagnetization is very very important if you are welding ferrous material and the part has to be secured properly and attached to the welding machine and brought to the proper location and uh, aligned with the uh, electron beam properly <coughs> vacuum chamber is sealed and vacuum pump is started and expected or design level of vacuum has to be achieved and uh, alignment electron beam alignment is done and the welding cycle is then initiated after the welding cycle is initiated and welding is completed the vacuum chamber is repressurized and opened and the parts is taken out remember in electron beam welding post processing is very very less we don't have to remove any additional material because we are not added, adding anything so the post processing requirement is absolutely you can say almost zero and this process uh, can be inspected by various non destructive testing process of course and uh, from application point of view uh, many a times in aerospace engineering particularly in aerospace engineering we require to join uh, uh, nuclear industries uh, we require to join some exotic materials uh, some reactive materials some refractory materials which are very difficult by other processes so electron beam welding is ideally uh, suited for this type of industries like nuclear industries uh, nuclear power plant industries or nuclear uh, industries and for um, <coughs> Uh, this aerospace industries so they use quite often the electro mm. electron beam welding uh, mind you this process by controlling the uh, exposure time and the power density we can use it for machining also particularly for making holes uh, in materials <coughs> uh, electron beam machining is also another popular method so we can control the power density and the exposure time and we can uh, we can control the whether it is a welding process or a machining process the same instrument can be used okay now conduction mode and uh, keyhole mode this we will be discussing so if the crossover is above the uh, workpiece surface then we obtain a silo weld bit and the heat will be conducted in all direction and as we progress we obtain a silo weld <coughs> however in keyhole mode so the the crossover is below the surface and what will happen the electron beam creates a weld pool around a hole so it creates a hole and around the whole weld metal pool is there okay molten uh, metal is there around the hole now as this hole travels the molten metal comes and refills the hole and solidifies okay trailing the hole so the hole is moving forward and the molten metal is resolidifying uh, the hole so this process is called keyhole mode now this is prevalent not only in uh, electron beam molding it is also prevalent this type of two modes conduction mode and keyhole mode also is prevalent in laser beam welding <coughs> so you can see this is shallow this is almost semicircular you can say and this is uh, deep penetration so for keyhole uh, we can obtain deep penetration here so the thickness uh, of the workpiece can be 0 0.01 mm to around 150 mm already we have discussed and up to 300 or 500 mm in aluminium so that again will vary 
so popular with refractory materials like tungsten, molybdenum, niobium, uh, titanium, zirconium, beryllium. <coughs> also, electron beam is capable of joining dissimilar materials. This is very important. Dissimilar not only in that the two material base metal is dissimilar or uh, different alloys, but dissimilar in the sense that one is thick and one is thin. Thick thin is also called dissimilar welding. So thick plate to thin plate and thin plate to thick plate uh, is also called dissimilar welding process. So here dissimilar not only in the sense that the metal A and metal B were joining are different, but in the sense the thickness may also be different. So that is possible in electron beam welding. So the advantages are that uh, high quality welding, the heat affected zone is extremely narrow, no filler material is required. The shielding gas or flux is not required, tight and continuous weld, distortion is, residual stress is also less, distortion is also less, narrow weld, narrow heat affected zone already we have discussed. Another advantage you can say or desirable, whatever you call it, uh, that the, the cooling rate is also high. So when the cooling rate is high, the grains will be of smaller size. So hardness will increase. Now this can be an advantage, this can be a disadvantage also. Now when the cooling rate is high, so uh, in certain materials like uh, high carbon steel, it may lead to cracking. So for faster cooling rate, it may lead to cracking. So that in that case, it creates some problem. So in normally the cooling rate in electron beam welding as well as in laser beam welding is high. Other some limitations are that it's difficult to weld large workpiece because you require a large vacuum chamber and to create a large vacuum vacuum in a large vacuum chamber it will be expensive the equipment is of course extremely expensive uh, the production costs are high and there may be extra irradiation which is extremely harmful <coughs> so these are the limitations of electron beam welding applications we have discussed so we have covered most of the part okay uh, this is important if you compare uh, electron beam welding with laser beam welding uh, this is a chart I have found in the net. Uh, okay, now this is very important in the sense you can see the power output is quite high in electron beam welding compared to laser beam welding, and the melting capacity is also very high. Uh, and the beam efficiency is extremely high compared to that of laser beam welding. So, plate thickness that can be welded is also very high compared to that of laser beam welding. Uh, vacuum is required, whereas in this cases vacuum is not required this is co2 laser and this is nd yak laser or yak laser uh, and of course uh, electron beam is mainly carried out for metals whereas laser beam welding can be carried out for metals as well as non metals like polymers and acetta we can carry out laser beam welding so but the material has to be opaque transparent material we cannot carry out laser beam welding <coughs> so that's it in this lecture so hope you have liked this lecture. In case of any doubt, please feel free to contact me, write in the uh, comment sections and I will try to get back to you. Thank you for watching this video.